Welcome to this week's market report. Today is March the 28th, just past 1 a.m. Toronto time. There's then been some breaking news in the markets in regards to interest rate. So I'm going to be talking about that at the end of the video. So stick around because you don't want to miss that. So let's get started with the regular stuff that we go through every week. So if you look at the active sales in downtown, we are up. So last week we were at about uh, 759 active listings. This week's we're at 792. So the trend is still going up. As we can see, the supply is starting to build. In regards to the unit sales, we're getting close to the 700 mark for March. Uh, we're at 761 sales so far this March. You know, February ended up with 792. If we compare it to previous Marches, you'll see again COVID during COVID the unprecedented 2021 sales, 1109 sales that happened in March of 2021. Don't think that's going to happen again anytime soon. Uh, the previous March, right when COVID hit, there was 502 sales, and um, in nine, 2019, there was 528. If you look at the average prices, again, I'm not a huge fan of average price, but uh, you can see that the average price is a lot higher. It's uh, just over 877000 Sorry, it gets cut off on my screen. Um, speaking of average price, so the best measure to use is the home price index. So if you look at the graph, you can see that starting from January 2021, the markets appreciated very rapidly from 641,000 to over 820,000. So in the period of uh, just over a year, we saw the prices go up by $180,000 $180, in the downtown core. So the red line is a C1 district, the, the blue line is a C8 district, so it's pretty much the same trajectory. The interesting thing to note is how steep the, the curve is, because the steeper the curve, the faster the rate of appreciation, you know, which is kind of concerning because you don't want to see prices rising this quickly. I don't think you've ever seen it rise this fast in the history of Toronto. So that's, um, that's concerning. And I think some, you know, when this happens, and the longer it happens, the closer we're getting to the peak of the market. So it'll be interesting to see how this is changing over the next couple of months. So use this as a measure for price instead of the average price, as I've mentioned in my previous videos. If you look at the median price, some people like to look at the median price. We're still high at all time highs as well, pretty much. It's dropped slightly from February, but uh, all the numbers aren't fully in yet for March, so we'll see how it ends up, but it's pretty close, 755, just over 755, 775,000, sorry. If you look at the list price, sales price ratios, again, all time highs, we're seeing uh, average properties in condos selling for 110% over their asking price. So if you're a buyer that's looking on the market right now on MLS, you have to question sometimes when you see the prices because the price that you're looking at is not the real price. Most likely the seller is going to want more than that and they're holding back on offers to create a bidding war so they can get a higher price than their list price. So keep that in mind. But again, we're, we're at, we're at all-time highs right now. Never seen this before. If you look at the sales days on market, because the market is so hot, Inventory is moving quickly, so we have a very low days on market. It's only 10 days on market. I spoke about this in my previous video, but take days on market because with a grain of salt because actually the actual days on market is going to be a lot shorter. In a hot market like this, things would sell you know, within a day or even less. So the reason why there's 10 days on market is because agents are holding back on offers. So you'll never ever see this days on market go to zero or close to one. It will never happen. So we'll just take a look at the active listings for the rental market. So rental market listings are actually, active listings are coming down. That's the trend we're seeing right now. If this continues and supply starts to dry up, then you'll start to see the rental prices start going up again. It's been pretty flat for the past few months. 
as you'll see in the next graphs. The number of condo units that leased in March so far, 1,468. If you compare it to previous years, again, 2021 was an outlier year, 2,680 units. Don't, say, don't think that's gonna ever happen again. Uh, March 20 was about, was right when COVID hit. So we had 1,178 properties at least that year. In 2019, we had a 1401. So going back to, you know, kind of the regular numbers, where were we at, where we were at before COVID. So that's good to see. So we're actually seeing good movement. It's, uh, it's not anything unusual. So if this continues and the, what happens in the previous markets happen this year, we should start seeing inventory dropping as we get into the spring market, into the summer markets, because that's when the uh, rentals, rental markets is the most active. So if you look at the average price, we're at 24.88 right now for the month of March. As you can see, it's been relatively flat, the rental market. And the median price for the rental prices have gone up slightly as well. So we're at 22.98 compared to 22.50, which has been the last six months. If you look at the rent price, list price ratio, it has gone up slightly from the previous month. So we're getting closer to the 100% mark. Once it starts going over this number, the market you'll see that the rental market is very active and inventory will be flying off the shelf. And the condo and the days on market for the average days on market to rent a condo right now in the downtown is about 20 days. So that's been relatively flat as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this changes over the next coming months as we get into the spring into the summer markets. Now let's take a look at what the average prices are for studios right now. So we're looking at about 524,000 for a studio. If you're looking at one bedrooms, you're looking at over $700,000 in downtown now for a one bedroom. One bedroom dens are getting close to 800,000. Two beds are about 980,000. Two bedroom plus dens are about 1.3 million. Three bedrooms are going for about 1.6 million. And then three bedroom plus dens again, there's not much data, so I wouldn't really use this information. If you look at the rental prices, a studio average studio price right now is about 1760. Studio den 1790. I would, again, there's not that many studio dens, so I'd kind of ignore that data. One bedrooms, 2078. One bedroom plus dens, they're getting about 23.24. One, two bedrooms are getting just under $3,000, 29.22. Two bedroom plus dens are getting about 3,600 almost. And three bedrooms are getting about $4,000 in the downtown. And again, we can ignore this three bedroom plus den number because there's only been six leased units. So that data is can be, I'm sure there's some outliers in there. All right, so finally, I'm just going to touch base on a, t a text I received from one of my agents uh, today, actually. He said uh, that, um, so this is very interesting. So whenever the bond yield starts to increase, the fixed rate mortgages start to ex increase. So he's saying that he's never, this, this person, Rod, uh, he's never seen uh, that the bond rate increase in a in a 15 day period at, at the rate that he's seen it increase over the last couple of days. So that's basically saying that the fixed rate interest rates are going to go up. I re, I actually talked to one of my RBC partners the other day, and he's telling me that the five year fixed rate is now 3.54 percent. That's a preferred rate. So what that means is that it's going to be more expensive for buyers. To buy in the market now and if that continues then what you're going to see is that the prices of real estate are going to come down and the reason for that is interest rates 
are to real estate like gravity it it's it's uh, if it goes up then the real estate prices will go down because it's going to affect people's affordability to buy into the market and since Canada especially you know they have this stress test as well you're going to have to add your your qualification is going to be a lot more difficult to get a mortgage so you know higher it's more difficult to get qualified for a mortgage there's going to be less buyers on the market if there's going to be less buyers on the market the supply is going to start to build if the supply starts to build the prices will have to come down to a point where the buyers will start jumping into the market again so remember this it's very important this type of information is key to kind of looking at what happens with the real estate market so we'll mark this date on our calendar and we will see how things change in the future as this starts this starts to met the higher interest rates start to manifest itself on the market and see how buyer sentiments change while this is happening so anyways thanks for watching just wanted to put that and you know, plant that seed in your guys head um, so that you guys can start thinking about you know how and why things are going to change and like I said there's a reason for everything once we go back and look at it it's really you know easy to understand you know of course we cannot predict the future of the market that's something that no one can do but we can always go back and observe so remember this day and this point in time thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next video